and the Cash family members have served as consultants to ensure the authenticity of the restoration, and they've donated special items for display in both the home as well as the administration building. We are especially pleased today to have Roseanne Cash with us. She has just returned from a highly acclaimed trip in Europe where she has been promoting her new album, The River and the Thread. We all feel deeply honored and take great pride in the fact that this album has grown out of her reconnection with the South through this project. It gives me great pleasure to call on Roseanne Cash. Thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief. I know it's hot, but I just want you to remember that the Cash family picked cotton in this heat and went home to no air conditioning. So if that helps you put it in context. The Dias Colony was part of uh, Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, a WPA project. 500 desperately poor families applied for aid uh, and came here. 500 cottages, land, a mule, seed, outbuildings. And this saved the Cash family. It was their redemption. My dad always said his first memory was of coming to this beautiful new home and walking in the door and seeing five cans of paint in the front room of a freshly painted home. And um, I have a friend who said to me, dude, you need to put the five cans of paint in a song. So I did. I wrote a song called The Sunken Lands, and that's the first line is those five cans of paint. The caches were hard working and it was a tough life clearing what's called the gumbo soil. As you know, it was so sticky and tough. A lot of people gave up, but the Cash family persevered. They stayed. My dad was profoundly influenced by his upbringing here. And from the time he was eight years old, he did the work of a man in the cotton fields. And so much of the music rose from this very earth. Music was redemption, too. It was one of the strongest ties that bound the family. And the songs they sang in the fields were seared in his heart forever. He sung them his whole life. He loved music so much that my grandmother took in um, extra washing to make extra money to get him singing lessons. But after a couple of lessons, the singing teacher brought him home and she said, now this boy has something special and I don't want to mess it up, so don't bring him back. I get a lot of requests to participate in Johnny Cash projects and I turn them all down until this one came across my desk. Arkansas State University said they wanted to purchase the home and restore it. Would the Cash family support it? We all said yes. We have all been on board from day one because this is real. It's true. It's authentic. It's the thing that would have meant the most to my father. I don't speak for him. I don't give him opinions since he's passed away, but this is one thing I can say I know for certain. This would have meant more to him than any other honor, any Grammy, any gold record, this. Ruth Hawkins asked me if I would talk about what it was like growing up here in Dias, Arkansas. But I want to tell you, I was a happy child. I didn't know we were poor, but someone told us we were. And my daddy worked really hard on our farm out on Road, road 3, Box 266. Mom and daddy worked really hard, and I don't know how in the world my mother and daddy ever raised seven kids without any electricity or running water. We got running water when, I was, when, I, when we moved to the town here, the center. But we didn't have electricity until I was 10 years old. But, you know, we didn't worry about things like that back then. It was just the way life was. Well, I saw the house in 2011 when uh, Arkansas State University had just purchased it. And it was inconceivable that it could look as it does today. We were very worried that the house would be on the ground before uh, Dr. Hawkins' team could get to it. So to see the progress, I've seen it two or three times, and the progress has been really startling. Today was a revelation. To see all of the rooms completely restored as they were to the most meticulous historic detail, because my Aunt Joanne and Uncle Tom have such great memories, and they remembered everything down to the kind of pots and pans, to the curtains, to the linoleum on the floor, 
Some of the original pieces were found and are in the house, which gives it even more uh, resonance and beauty. And it's like time travel. And I was telling Ruth today that uh, if my dad could walk into that house today, I think he would be so overcome with the feeling of going back in time and to see his deepest memories preserved forever now and for other people to see how they lived and what influenced him so profoundly. It's, um, I just never expected anything like this and I have to give it up to Ruth and the team for what they've done. Obviously the key challenge was the fact that this is gumbo soil. <laughs> And that means it rolls, it moves, it shifts. And if you look around town, you see a lot of houses that are unleveled because of that. And that's what had happened uh, to the cash home. It literally had sunk into the ground in the sunken lands. <laughs> and because those concrete pillars that, uh, that it sits on, uh, the piers rather, uh, they turned and they'd sunk. And so there was a lot of rot you know, the wood sills and so forth. So we had to move it off of its foundation, uh, dig a pit eight feet deep, and dig out all that gumbo soil and then fill it with better draining soil. And then we dug a trench around it, uh, two feet wide around it and poured concrete and created that as a base and put dirt over it so that you couldn't see it. So those concrete piers are now sitting on that concrete foundation that you don't see. So. Literally, most of our money went into the ground. <laughs> My children needed to know that two generations back, we were cotton farmers, that this is where we came from. So the first trip down here for the first fundraiser that we arranged to restore the home to raise funds, um, Marshall Grant, who was my dad's original bass player in the Tennessee Two, was there. He came to rehearsal that day. He played his big, upright bass guitar. And he had a brain aneurysm that night. So on the last conscious day of his life, he played the bass guitar for this project. Well, I'm a songwriter, and there was no way to avoid the song <laughs> that was inside that experience. That coupled to coming out here to see the house for the first time, and I was really moved by how hard my grandmother's life was. And I just thought about her raising seven kids, picking cotton, cooking at the end of the day, starting out with no electricity or plumbing, and realized that a modern woman as myself, I could not have done that. But there was something steely in her that we inherited. So that, there was a song in that for me too, and I wrote uh, with my husband, I wrote The Sunken Lands, about the sunken lands of Arkansas and about her. Those two songs, Etta's tune about Marshall and Etta Grant, The Sunken Lands about this, opened up a whole album called The River and the Thread. And we took a lot of trips through the Delta when we were writing these songs, and it's been a life-changing experience. I've never had songwriting experiences like that, and the things that I thought were anecdotal in my life, the fact that I was born in Memphis, the fact that my father came from here, my grandparents were cotton farmers, I thought those were just facts strung along in my life. They are actually the things that I've carried with me my whole life and have informed me as a musician, as a wife and mother. What we were aiming for was authenticity. We really wanted to get it right. And we're very fortunate that we did have two people that were born and raised in that house, Joanne and, and Tommy. And so they were great consultants on the project. They described every stick of furniture in the house and we tried to be true to that. And so we were really anxious for all the family to come and see that and see if we had captured that. And it was really gratifying to see the reactions because uh, as they picked up pictures of the family and that were on the on the piano and I mean it really I, I think it looks like the Cash family just stepped out of the house to yeah. go to church. <laughs> yeah I just had an experience to, an hour ago of taking three of my five children into my dad's childhood bedroom 
And the four of us stood there and wept. Um, it was the oddest sensation of thinking of my dad as a little boy in that very spot. And what if he could have seen his middle-aged daughter and three of his grandchildren walk in that room? How would, how would he have felt? Could he even conceive it? It was too much. It was the um, most overwhelming sense and so beautiful. I remember my father bringing us back here. I must have been 12 the first time he brought us back. There were still enormous trees around the house, um, which uh, Dr. Hawkins has replanted those cottonwoods, and someday they'll be enormous again. And the house uh, was boarded up. There was no one here. And I remember my dad walking around the house, looking in every window. And there was a sense of um, loss sense of heaviness of heart that first time. And as a preteen child, I was aware of it, but I didn't quite understand it. And then, you know, to really begin to realize how deep the loss of his brother Jack um, affected him, how profound that loss was for the whole family, and how it informed a lot of his later work. That was something I became aware of as a preteen. And then, of course, all the songs about the soil, you know, it all started to make sense my first visit.